Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. As a mom of 11, I at one point was homeschooling 10 children at one time. And I'll tell you what, out of necessity, I had to find some planning hacks so that it would not take me hours upon hours to plan our homeschool schedule. So today I'm going to share some tips with you. The other week on Instagram, I shared a photo of our homeschool plan for the week, and I mentioned how it really only takes me maybe 10 or 15 minutes at the most to plan out a homeschool week for the seven kids that I am homeschooling this year. And I had a lot of inquiries about it. A lot of people wanted to know how I did it that fast with so many kids. And so I'm just going to get right into it because I know that this is something that I really struggled with at first. So the first thing, and this is really important, don't plan too far ahead. I know how tempting it can be to plan out weeks, months, even a whole year ahead of time. I did the whole year thing when I first got my CONUS Volume 2. I was so excited as I was paging through everything that I actually sat down and between two days time, I probably spent a total of about eight hours planning our entire homeschool year. And that didn't pan out very well. After a couple of weeks, I kind of had to keep adjusting it and I got frustrated because it just, I kept scratching things out, having to move things. And I realized that the reason that I did it again was because I was excited to use it, but it really wasn't helpful in the end because you have to be flexible when you're homeschooling. And you know, it can really even be the same way if you're only planning like a month ahead or even a couple of weeks ahead of time because things unexpectedly happen all the time. Or maybe your kids will ask you to do something that is not on your schedule, but that it is something that you know that they're going to like to learn about. And these are really things that you have to learn to adjust to as a homeschooling parent. So what I really try to do now is I will not schedule farther out than one week at a time. And even then, flexibility is the key. Do not be afraid to change things if you have to. So the second thing is don't get hung up on dates. That's another thing that I used to do. I would write down the specific dates that we were doing um, our little lessons and then something would happen and I would have to change a date and then something else would happen and then I would have to shift more dates around and eventually I would get completely frustrated because if you are planning out far ahead of time um, and then you have all of these dates to adjust, it, it affects everything, which is again why I'm really saying don't plan too far ahead because if you only planned one week and you have to change a day, it's really not a big deal. You only have like four or five days of school schedule depending on if you do four or five day homeschool weeks. So what I really do now is I just write D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, just meaning day one, day two, etc. And I don't even really need to do that. I could probably just do bullet points maybe to, to show the difference in the homeschool days, but I do that just because I still um, get a little anxiety if I have specific dates written down and I don't get to do things on those specific days. So keeping things very general is a huge help because then when you do have to shift things, it for those of us who are type A, it really doesn't bother us as much. All right, so the third thing is don't write more than you have to. That was something else that I used to do um, years ago. And I would write out, for example, if my kids were working in workbooks, I would write specifically what pages they had to do on the different days. Um, if they were reading chapters in their silent reading books or if they were reading chapters in, I think at the time we were using textbooks, I would write specifically the, the chapters that they would have to, that they were going to do. And then underneath that, I would write down the chapter review questions. Um, and I also used to write everything out. Now what I do is for the workbooks that my kids use, like for example, for language arts, or they have like a, it's a fun schooling math, it's Minecraft math that they do in their morning basket, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But 
So all they do is they just do one page and then the next day they, they do the next page and then the next day they do the next page. So if your kids are doing something like that, if they just do like one or two pages a day and then the following day or whatever day they're scheduled to do it again, they just continue on where they left off. Is there really a reason to write down specifically what page numbers they have to do? All they have to do is open and go. You don't really need to worry about writing down those page numbers or even those chapters. Like if your child is reading a, a silent reading book and you know that they have to read chapter two. Well, if they finished off at chapter one and they have their bookmark or like my kids are like me and they turn down the corner of the page and it's at chapter two, they already know where to pick up. So you don't really need to worry about um, writing specific things down. Now, I understand that sometimes with textbooks, it's a little bit harder. You might have to write specifically what they're reading. Like I know that for some of my oldest daughters, she, she loved learning through textbooks. I shouldn't say loved. She was, she was in school for the longest period of time other than my oldest child, so she grew so used to using textbooks that that was her preferred method for quite some time. And so when I would assign chapters, though, the chapters were really long in some of her textbooks, so then I would assign only certain sections for her to read every day. So in those cases, yes, you do have to write down specifically so that they know where to start and where to finish, or at least where to finish if they know where to start at. But if they're, they're using a textbook that they just do kind of like one chapter every day, you don't need to keep writing down the chapter that they're doing. And if they know to always do the chapter review questions, you don't have to write that down either. Also, use abbreviations. I use abbreviations for everything. I use MB for morning basket. I use RA for read aloud. Um, LA for language arts. I use TT for thinking tree, um, just because it was easier to abbreviate than fun schooling. Um, NB for notebooking. So it doesn't sound like much, but when you're writing down a bunch of stuff, it really is a time saver to just have those abbreviations handy. So you don't have to keep writing things out over and over and over and over again. So the next thing is, um, I told you that I was gonna talk a little bit about morning baskets. Morning baskets, are not only really good for your kids to learn how to work independently, and I will leave links in the description box to videos about morning baskets. So, going back to that though, morning baskets are not only a good way for your kids to learn to work independently, they're also great planning savers too. Why? Well, because right now our morning baskets only have three things in them because my kids already finished their German workbook and they already finished their geography for the year. And um, we were taking a break from the cursive because unfortunately my kids were getting a little bit frustrated. So I told them that we would take some time off. But my kids still have in their morning basket, they still have the Fun Schooling Minecraft math book. They have spelling. They have to do three times each of spelling every day. And they keep their silent reading books in there because they have to do their silent reading. So even though there's only three things in that morning basket now, right before there were, I think, six things in the morning basket. And it's so much easier in my, my lesson plan book, which I only use a composition book that I got at the dollar store. I don't use anything fancy. And I'm going to show it to you in a little bit. And I will also link videos showing me planning too, just so you know. But anyway, um, now I forget what I was saying. Hmm. Okay, I remember. So anyway, so since we have everything kept in one morning basket, when I am writing it down in our in my lesson plan book, I don't have to write each thing individually every single day because they do those things four days a week. Our fifth day is usually for nature study or nature study documentaries if the weather isn't cooperating or whatever. But four days a week, my kids do everything in the morning basket. So rather than writing out spelling and math drills and silent reading and you know a few months ago cursive and German and what was the other thing geography um, all I have to do is write MB for morning basket they already know what their morning basket is and really for good measure I also write morning basket on our whiteboard and I have a list of the things included in the morning basket underneath it just in case they ever kind of forget but they've been doing it so long that now they know but yes writing that down, doing things like that, it really does help in your um, planning too. It saves so much time, so much writing. 
Um, another thing that really helps with all the writing is sticking to a basic routine. Now, sometimes you might change things up every now and then, but you know, there are times, or at least for some kids, that you really can have them do almost the same thing every single day and they will be okay with that. So for example, for my, for my two girls who are in high school right now, they do the same thing. They have basically, um, a two day rotation. So like, it would be like day one, day two, day one, day two. So one day they do morning basket, Bible, Spanish, language arts, biology, and math, well, algebra. And then the next day they will do morning basket, Bible, Spanish, language arts, history, and then algebra. And that's what they do unless, you know, something comes up and we change it up, but they do that four times a week. So sometimes I might not even write that out. I might just write C day one or C day two. And then I know just to go back up and we're at the point now that since they do that, we, we really don't even have to look at it anymore. They already know that if they did history yesterday, they're going to be doing biology today. So those, those, routines are really a huge help when it comes to planning. And some kids really do prefer to have um, a very organized and um, a routine that just kind of keeps on going all the time. Now, I do have a basic routine like that for my middles group, although we do change things up a little bit more than they do because we're doing unit studies and our, our unit studies are different every day. Not the topic, but the activities that we're doing. So my, my middles will do like morning basket, Bible, and read aloud every day, and language arts and math. And the only thing that will change up is the unit study activities. So once you get it in your head and you use your abbreviations, once you write it, it takes hardly any time at all. Once you just get, you, you just get used to these things. Also, another thing that I have to say is that unit studies, like I just mentioned, and or grouping your kids any other way, not only are they good, that they're, they're easier for you to teach multiple ages because you don't have to do everyone separately. They're also good because your kids get to do things together, um, but they're also more planning time savers because you're going to have less writing. If you have seven kids who are all doing seven different things every single day, yeah, that is going to be a lot of writing and you're really not going to be able to do much about it taking quite a bit of time. But since I have seven kids, but only two separate groups, that really helps it helps with, with my planning time because they all, we'll, we'll talk about my middle group now, they all do morning basket and Bible and read aloud and then the unit study activities. They do all of that together and then when it comes to language arts and math, they do that independently, but they already know that they just do whatever comes next. So I don't have to write down specifically what they're doing. I just write language arts and math. So really such a time saver when you are grouping your kids, for example, with unit studies. It doesn't just have to be with unit studies, although that really is the easiest way to group your kids together, but that's something that you should really consider if you have several kids and you're trying to teach them all separately. Um, so just a few things that I wanted to go over before I finish this out is I mentioned this in the beginning, be flexible. Don't be afraid to change your schedule if something happens. So about two weeks ago, I had a plan for my kids to, I think they were supposed to watch a video about David, um, biblical David. And then I wanted them to write facts about lions that day. I think that's what it was that day. So I had a plan and I had it all written on the whiteboard already, but then Ireland, my 11 year old, she came up to me so excited. She wanted to make a volcano, which yeah, my kids have made volcanoes before, but I thought to myself, we homeschool. This is the nice thing about homeschooling is let, let, it, let your kids do something fun. So what we did was I scrapped those unit study plans for the day and my kids went out in the kitchen. They made their own Play-Doh using flour, salt, and water. They added some brown paint to the Play-Doh. They formed a little volcano around an empty water bottle and then they did the whole, um, baking soda and vinegar. And the only thing that I regret about it is just that I only had apple cider vinegar. So my house smelled bad for quite a while. But other than that, I did not regret that we didn't do the rest of uh, what I had originally planned. 
Now, and that's also because I should say that they didn't do just the volcano. I thought that it was a really good time then. I knew that there was a Magic School Bus episode about volcanic islands. So then after we did that, then we sat down and we watched a video about volcanic islands. And we had a really good day. So don't be afraid to be flexible. Just because you have it written in your planner does not mean that it's written in stone. Your planner is a guide. Think of it as a list of goals that, that you would hope to attain, but if something else happens and you need to replace it or maybe move it, it's totally fine. It is a guide. It is just to give you an idea of what it is that you wanted to do. So the last thing is I was just going to share with you, I, I already read to you um, what is written in my planner and how I do things, but I thought a visual would help you. So I have two columns on this page and the left column is my middles group and my right column is my teens and as you will notice um, I have all of the abbreviations being used and all of that good stuff so on the left side of the column which is my middles they have morning basket Bible read aloud German journaling language arts and math that's day one and then day two morning basket Bible read aloud German and you notice that like so for the first four days those first two lines are exactly the same now back when I wrote this page they were still doing their notebooking rotation now we've been focusing more on unit studies but the reason that I use this page now is because I've been writing it in pencil and it didn't show up very well in a photo and this was in pen so that's why I'm using this anyways then the fifth day um, you will notice that all we do that day is Bible read aloud and silent reading. And then those were the unit study activities that they did that day. So they did the definition of courage and they did some copy work. And then they learned about David and Goliath that day. So the next column is my teens. And you'll see that theirs is just alternating each day, except for day five is different because again, we, we do something different on the fifth day. So day one for my teens was morning basket. Bible, Spanish, language arts. At that point, I was still writing copy work every day. I, now it's in the morning basket, so I don't even have to write copy work anymore. Biology and math. And then day two, they have morning basket, Bible, Spanish, language arts, copy work, history and math. And then you'll notice that day three and day four are just like day one and day two. And so, yes, yeah, so there really are times now that I will just write, see day one or see day two. And in fact, I really kind of just do that just for the sake of doing it because now we know we've been doing it for so long. So anyway, so I made this video for you today to hopefully encourage you to hopefully help you to save some time if you've been struggling with spending way too much time doing way too much writing on your planners. And I just want to show you that this is my planner. You don't need anything fancy. I did shift to a planner last year that I had bought at I think that I order it or I got it at Staples. I don't remember, but I ended up back at the composition book again, because honestly they, they both work just as well for me and I would rather save money and spend that money on something else. But anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I say, what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave one here or over on Instagram or on my YouTube community page. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.